Imagination. It's a local board board carnival imagination. You can hear the announcement. Yeah, it's, it's called the imagination. Yeah. I could give each of you a piece of paper and tell me to, you know, provide me your paranormal opinion. You know, how does all this work? Ghosts and spirits and paranormal activities. I get about 25 different opinions. up there is the very very front of the ship on the outside of that right on the other side of the through there is outside so you're as far forward inside the ship as you can physically be this is also the location of the worst tragedy that befell the Queen Mary during all of her years at sea in 31 years the worst incident took place involving this area of the ship it was October 2nd of 1942. The Queen Mary had approximately 11,000 men on board, 11,000 American servicemen on board, heading for the west coast of Ireland. When she was up to speed, she had no escort ships. She was too fast. She literally outran everybody. Here's another way of uh, contemplating her speed. She traveled at 28 and a half knots comfortably. That's 33 miles an hour, 55 kilometers an hour, if that helps. A German torpedo during World War II, running in the water, traveled at 24 knots. She literally was faster than a torpedo. That's where speed comes in very handy. She literally outran everything. So when she was up to speed, she traveled alone, she just punched it. But she had to slow down, of course, and that took about a day for her to properly slow down. That's when she was most vulnerable. On October 2nd, around sunrise, she was joined by six light cruisers that could they keep up to her. She was starting to slow down. And they came out from the, from the coastline, the coast of Ireland, and they basically encircled her to provide that net of protection from German U-boats. One of those light cruisers was called the Curacao. The Curacao is a 4,000 gross ton <laughs> light cruiser. 4,000. Queen Mary, anybody remember? 80. Almost 80. 2,000, I think somebody just said. Almost 82,000, so huge difference in their size. The Curacao was up off of the, the Queen Mary's port bow all day long, basically forward and to the left, out there in the far reaches of the parking lot type of thing. Just picture that. Uh, way out there, out there all day long, zigging and zagging and zipping around doing its thing. For reasons that have never been explained, they have never figured out a cause or who made the decision? Who made the mistake? Queen Mary was going like this, and it's about 4.30 in the afternoon. The Curacao's out here, and all of a sudden the Curacao cut across the Queen Mary's bow. Right here behind me. The, Curacao, uh, the Queen Mary struck the Curacao right at midship. Cut her in half, went right through. The Curacao was split into two halves. They both exploded and then sank very, very quickly. There were 439 young men aboard the Curacao. There were 338 who died that day. There were 101 that were rescued from the sea 
uh, by other vessels uh, that were around. And, uh, but only 101 survivors, and near, oh, a little over three quarters of that crew was killed. The Queen Mary kept right on going. She had no opportunity to lend assistance, to help, to stop, nothing. She had orders never to stop, but it would have taken her most better part of a day just to get, or well, half a day anyways, to get back turned around to that original, you know, the point of impact. Plus, it would have been well after dark and all that stuff. So other ships picked up the survivors and anybody that they could, they could recover. Uh, the Queen Mary had extensive damage to her bow. It was caved in about 10, 11 feet for six full decks, well below the water line. She did take on water down into the lower cargo hold, way down in there. She did take on water. She was never in danger of sinking. But they discovered later, as they were getting it cleaned up to get a new bow put on, uh, they were cleaning all this up down below. They discovered wreckage. Actually, there was steel, metal, other debris from the Curacao in our cargo hold. It had actually the, the impact, so you know the, the force of that impact that would have been so high. The mass of this ship hitting that ship, you know, just boom. It just almost like it absorbed some of that, some of the Curacao down here in below. The energy down here. I, I use simple language so I can involve as many people as possible. A hot spot is what we find down here. I feel like yeah. This is a hot spot down here. Uh, it is generally not considered the most comfortable place on the ship. This is one of those areas on board I don't, uh, I don't mind admitting that when I come down here, usually I do the safety checks in the mornings, walk around the corner, and uh, always have my cup of coffee. It's before most people are even up on the ship. And I feel like I'm going to my chiropractor, and, and she's putting on her little electrode thingies uh, the, the old whoop on, on my neck, and that's how it feels sometimes. It can be really intense down here. Uh, it's really, really uh, intense. I urge you to take those pictures, keep it rolling, uh, whatever you got going on. Now we're ready. Push the button.